working theory is high resistance in the ground wire to the fuel pump relay causing the fuel pump to not get the appropriate amount of amperage or whatever running hot burning through fuel pumps and maybe the, the PCM is to blame. All right, we're chasing down the fuel pump not working on this Ford Escape. It's a 2000 manufacturing date, so maybe sold 2001 XLS. So let's just, uh, you know, I, I charged the battery yesterday, so I know it's charged. And we can check the fuel pump fuse, power getting there, and then the uh, fuel pump relay is this one here. So the relay, uh, I'm not going to like actually test the relay because I, I swapped out a few of these just to see and it didn't make any difference. So right now the key is off and this bottom prong is the only one that has power. The other four have no power, right? But just the bottom one. Now with key on, the right hand side has power. And so that means that, that the, the switching neutral is on the left hand side and the power to the fuel pump comes out the top. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this back in and we'll look at the uh, fuel pump. All right, so one thing to note on this year model is that there's two fuel lines. There's, there's an outgoing one and a return one. On the later year models of the Escape, there's only one <laughs> fuel line and, and the fuel pressure is regulated by, by some sort of pump controller. But this one seems to be old school. So we don't have the pump controller. The fuel pressure is probably regulated on the fuel rail somewhere. And then the wiring harness that goes to the fuel pump, it's, it's a four wire. So two of these will be uh, for the uh, fuel gauge and two of them will be for the fuel pump. And so this one has already been probed a whole bunch. So that's probably the positive for the fuel pump. And, and the, the big negative, the big black one, that's probably the ground for the fuel pump as well. The two smaller ones, I assume, are the, the sending unit. The access to the fuel pump is underneath the rear seat on the driver's side. That's pretty convenient. So I've already checked the inertial switch. It's, it's fine. We'll look at that in a little bit, but I'm gonna stick my power probe in here. I'm a one man band right now. So, uh, so I'm just gonna try to hold this with one hand and I'm gonna turn the key on, see if I get any so it goes up to 11.7 or 11.8 and then it falls down to 6. Huh. Then what happens if I turn it over? Fairly low voltage, 9.2 volts. So that's not real promising. There might not be enough voltage to run the pump. So I went ahead and took the inertial switch off just to give it a, a test. And it's kind of interesting, it makes some weird noises. So when you whack it hard enough, the button pops up, right? And then that uh, opens the circuit and you have to reset it. So, and it only plugs into two of the wires. So with the continuity test, button depressed, we get a closed circuit. And then let me spank it. Then now what do we get? We get open circuit. So I'm gonna stick that back in. So I'm gonna try running a continuity test. I don't have long probes. So I, I, I got a long wire with a, a paddle blade. I'm just gonna shove that into the top of that relay. And then I'm gonna carry this back to the fuel pump. So since I don't know anything about this car, <laughs> You know, I've never worked on an escape in this way. I just want to kind of determine if there's something between the relay and the fuel pump or not. So I'm on the continuity test again. And let's just see. So yeah, yeah, that, that's an uninterrupted circuit. I say that there might be something by default, which is on there. There could be some controller, but let's just try running power directly to the pump. See if we can make it make a sound. So I'm going to move my little plug down here to where there's constant power. The ignition is still off, but we got constant power from this bottom pin. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this back in. We have constant power to this now. Does anything happen? I'm not hearing anything. I'm not real sure if I'm getting a real good connection there or not. 
but we might be looking at a fuel pump issue. I don't understand why the voltage drops so much. All right, so I'm going to test the resistance of the of the fuel power wire. So I'm going to put this wire back into the top position of this relay. So just normal resistance, almost nothing. Let's check resistance of, we'll, we'll plug into the positive wire and the other end of the positive wire here and we get a resistance of almost nothing. So there's nothing wrong with with the wire in resistance wise. And since we're here, let's go ahead and test the resistance of the motor. I mean the motor, the uh, the fuel pump. This is one. There's the other. And we're whoa. Okay, look at this. Ten mega ohms. Eleven mega ohms. 12 mega ohms okay so uh mega ohms is like effectively an insulator right <laughs> so so we should not be anywhere near near this level we're, we're creeping up to 13 mega ohms so the resistance inside of the fuel pump is is huge so the fuel pump i'm i'm i think the fuel pump might be bad guys Okay, so no resistance gets uh, you know through through the line. Let's just check voltages real quick. Let's see if we can account for the voltage drop we see. So we're at twelve point two one sitting here, and then you know everywhere along the line, twelve point two, twelve point two. All right, cool. But with the car in the on position even at the battery we get 11.8 and over here at the relay 11.8 okay relay is back in let's just see what the start voltage is I'm gonna turn the key on 11.74 it jumped to and then it falls down to the 6.6 .6 volts but it's more or less seeing the the normal battery voltage back here for a second and then when you crank it the battery's under load, so it's only getting six or seven volts to it. All right, I got the fuel pump relay out right now. And let's just turn the ignition on. Where does this six and a half volts come from when there's no power going to the, uh, I mean, through, through the relay to power the fuel pump? Does that mean there's some sort of sensor or something I just don't understand that with ignition on still getting you know six and a half volts to it yeah the fuel pump is bad but the owner of this car that only has like hundred and ten thousand miles on it so they've put the a fuel pump in it like six times so why are the fuel pumps going bad this is where we sort of exceed my level of diagnostic work so yeah I could put a new fuel pump in you know, it looks like from Ford, they're a few hundred bucks or something. But what's going to stop it from dying? You know, the reason why this car, a 2,000 year model car, has such low mileage is because it spent so much, of it, so much of its life broke. Uh, so putting another one in doesn't guarantee anything, unless you're just going to try to flip it and sell it and make it someone else's problem. Uh, so I don't know where to go from here just yet. I'm going to have to you know sleuth through the internet and try to sort something out I guess I don't know I'm gonna check the ground resistance as it goes through the PCM so the way the relay is switched is the PCM controls the the negative of the relays switching I'm pretty sure so so anyways you know in you know resistance and ohms you know it it's, says nothing and then if there's almost no resistance there's almost no resistance so right now, with the ground, the ignition off, there is no uh, reading whatsoever. Let's see what the resistance is with the ignition on. Key in ignition and on. What's it going to settle to? 35 kilo ohms resistance. 
grounding out to, to start the relay. It starts real high and then it drops low to 35. What do you think? Do you think 35 kilo ohms resistance through the, the PCM is an indication of a bad PCM? I really don't know. I'm out of my league here. So this is the PCM, isn't it? 35 kilo ohms resistance on a ground wire to activate a relay, relay sounds ridiculous. But I, I really need to find a wiring harness to know which wire in this this bracket would be the ground for for the the starter relay uh let me see if i can find that <laughs> okay i have a ridiculous setup here uh i couldn't find a wiring harness the internet out here in the country is just too slow so I, I just went through and i tested it all manually and so i have uh you know this this set to to uh continuity and i have it plugged in to the ground and then I have my power probe connected here just so I have a sharp point because this thing has really flat. But anyways, I found it. That's the wire I want to test continuity on or test resistance on. And as it always is, it literally was the second to last. I, I tested every single thing till I got here. So it's on this top left side if you're looking towards the cabin of the car and it's the, the second from the left very top can we see everything here okay so let's check the resistance on this uh, again my my probes for the meter are not real sharp so I stuck a wire in here let's just see what the resistance is there's almost no resistance point yeah yeah so this is the, the wiring is totally good uh, maybe that means the PCM is bad or maybe it doesn't maybe it means there's some other module somewhere that I'm unaware of but right now working theory is high resistance in the ground wire to the fuel pump relay is causing the fuel pump to not get maybe the appropriate amount of amperage or whatever running hot burning through fuel pumps and maybe the, the PCM is to blame but again, I just, I don't know anything about these cars, man. All right, well, I'm gonna leave this video here. Uh, I don't have any parts to fix anything. I was just doing diagnostics today, but there has to be a reason why this car has gone through, you know, had, had the pump replaced six times already. That means it came with one, had six more, seven, plus it needs another one, eight fuel pumps and 110,000 miles. There has to be a reason for it. And I'm, suspecting the the power control module or the PCM whatever they call it whatever that stands for so anyways hope this was useful to somebody help you diagnose something I'm not guaranteeing that I'm totally right with anything and please if I if I don't understand how resistance works or something because I was never trained in this I'm just trying to rub my little two brain cells I got left together to figure something out I hope you read me in the comments and teach me something all right y'all be good uh, give this video a thumbs up if it was useful to you. Thanks. Bye.